Hi there, Mr. Mahaffey here, and what we're going to be talking about in this screencast is what are ions and why do they form? And to start the story, it's helpful to look at where the most stable elements are, the most stable atoms on the periodic table. And the most stable elements here come in on group 18, and they're sometimes called the noble gases. And they're called the noble gases because they're so unreactive. Uh, they don't easily react to form compounds. They do occasionally, but, uh, but not very often. And these noble gases are so stable because they have a uh, full valence shell. Their outer electron shell is full, and uh, they don't want to either try to gain electrons react with another atom to steal electrons to fill its shell or to try to give electrons away. And we can look at the example of um, helium. And so helium is element two and it's the, the first of our noble gases. Let me draw the nucleus here. The helium atom nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. And because it has two protons and it's a neutral species, we know that it's going to have two electrons. And those two electrons are going to be hanging out in the first energy level. And that first energy level can only hold two electrons. We go down to our second noble gas. Our second noble gas is neon. If we look at neon's nucleus, this is neon here, and neon has 10 protons and it has 10 neutrons. And so because it's neutral as well, this is an atom of neon, uh, we know that to balance out these 10 positive protons, we need to have 10 electrons as well. And those electrons are going to uh, fill up starting with the lowest energy level. So that first energy level will have two electrons. That'll leave us eight left to get rid of, and they will go in the second energy level. And if we look at our third noble gas, our third noble gas is argon. And in the argon nucleus, so this is argon, here the argon nucleus has 18 protons, ATP plus, and it has 22 neutrons. And so it's going to have 18 electrons, which again will start filling up the energy levels, starting with the lowest one. So two of those 18 go in the first energy level, eight go in the second, and eight go in the third. And so our second energy level, in the case of neon, is totally full. In the case of argon, we've totally filled our first, second, and third energy levels. And so helium, neon, argon, and if we keep going down the list, krypton, xenon, radon, etc. These are going to be really, really stable because they filled these valence energy levels, these outer energy levels. And uh, so they're on our periodic table. They're examples of some of the most... Um, stable elements that we have. For the rest of our elements, they're not necessarily going to be very stable um, when we see them in the wild. If we take lithium, for example, so lithium here, element number three, so in our lithium nucleus, this is a atom. 
we have three protons and in the case of lithium we have four neutrons. And so that means that we, for lithium we have three electrons that we need to allocate to our energy levels. So again we'll start filling up our energy levels starting at the bottom. So the first energy level gets two, it's full, and then in our second energy level we have one lonely electron. And lithium isn't very happy with that. It doesn't like to have this single electron cruising around in its valence energy level. Now the second energy level will hold a total of eight electrons. So lithium has two options. It can either fill up this energy level, it can steal seven electrons from other um, atoms, other molecules, to fill up this valence shell, or it can get rid of this single electron. And so obviously it's a lot easier to get rid of one electron than it is to steal seven from others. So lithium is going to give this electron away. And it'll give this electron away to anybody who's willing to take it. So we take our lithium atom here. Three protons, four neutrons. And our three electrons. And anybody who comes by who is able to take this electron will. So this electron gets stolen by some other atom or some other molecule and what we're left with is this. We're left with we still have a lithium nucleus, right? Three protons, four neutrons. But our outer electron, our valence electron, has been stolen. And so we're left with a lithium ion. And this is a lithium ion that now has a charge imbalance. We have three plus charge in the nucleus, but then our electrons have a total charge of 2 minus. So the overall charge of lithium then is 1 plus. Because the charge from the nucleus is not totally shielded by these electrons. So we have a a net charge of 1 plus on our lithium ion. And you'll see on our periodic table of ions that lithium is going to tend to form a 1 plus ion. It likes to form a 1 plus ion because now it has this full valence energy level. It doesn't have this extra electron that's cruising around. And something similar is going to happen with negative ions, so atoms that form negative ions. And we could look, for example, at oxygen. So oxygen is element number eight, and if we draw an oxygen atom, our energy level diagram for an oxygen atom, inside the oxygen nucleus we have eight protons and we have eight neutrons. So that means that in our neutral oxygen atom we have eight electrons that we have to uh, distribute. So two of those eight electrons will go into the first energy level and the remaining six will go into the second energy level. So oxygen isn't happy either. It's not happy like this neon atom that has this full eight electrons in its second valence shell, in its second orbital, in its valence orbital. Oxygen wants to have that full eight electrons as well. And oxygen has to look and see, is it easier to pick up two electrons to give it a total of eight, or is it easier to lose six electrons? 
And unlike lithium, where it was easier to lose this valence electron to form a positive ion, for oxygen, it's going to be easier to gain two electrons to form a uh, negative ion. And so in the case of oxygen, we start out with this oxygen atom, which has eight electrons. And what's going to happen is it's going to steal two electrons from other atoms or other molecules. So two electrons, you could get one from something and one from something else, are going to be stolen by this oxygen atom. And the net result is going to be an oxygen ion that now has a full valence shell. So we now have eight electrons in this valence orbital, but now we have a charge imbalance as well. So this has become an oxygen ion because it now has a charge. We have eight positive uh, protons that are in the nucleus, and we have So we have eight units of positive charge. Now we have a total of 10 units of negative charge. So the overall charge then of this oxygen ion is two minus. So we have two more negative things than we do positive things. So hopefully this helps and shows why we get these positive and negative ions. And uh, you can see that similar things are going to happen. So we could draw similar diagrams for uh, sulfur, for phosphorus, for magnesium or calcium or strontium. And we would see that they're all going to form the charges that we see on this periodic table of ions. So calcium forms a 2 plus charge because the calcium atom loses two electrons. Potassium atom loses one electron to form a one plus charge. And our nonmetals over here are going to be gaining electrons. So that's why they're forming these negative charges. And where essentially these nonmetals over here are all going to want to they're all going to want to gain, when they become ions, they're going to want to gain the same electron configuration as their nearest noble gas. So fluorine, when it becomes fluoride, it maintains its fluorine nucleus, but it gets the same electron configuration as neon because it picks up one electron. And oxygen, when it becomes oxide, is going to keep its oxygen nucleus, so its protons and its neutrons, but it picks up two electrons to give it also the same electron configuration as neon. And we'll see similar trends in other periods as well. So for example, when chlorine becomes chloride, it gains an electron, and it ends up with the same electron configuration as argon. When sulfur becomes sulfide, it picks up two electrons to give it the same electron configuration as argon. When phosphorus becomes phosphide, again it picks up three electrons now to give it the same electron configuration as argon. And on this side of the periodic table, our metals are also going to now lose electrons to end up with the same electron configuration as their nearest noble gas. So when sodium becomes a sodium ion, it loses one electron, and it ends up with the same electron configuration as neon. When magnesium becomes an ion, it loses two electrons, and also ends up with the same electron configuration as neon, which is its nearest noble gas.